jazz club mm -hmm. featured, you know, in an episode, or a black graduation. To see the Hillman graduation on television, I was just watching it the other day, mm -hmm. and I'm like, you'll never see some, you'll never see this again. You don't want it's a whole hour episode. You hope, you hope. I'm right, you hope. <laughs> but I mean, it's so rare. It was so monumental that you saw that. And going through the experience, um, I found that not only were people, you know, welcoming of it on one hand, but they were also very critical of it. Um, <coughs> excuse me, going back to what you were saying, that um, uh, I, people were welcoming of it and wanting to see it, but there were so many people who said this wasn't real, that these households did not exist. And um, I feel that people kind of negated it in a way to say it happened once, it can't happen again. And that, you know, did it really in fact happen the way that it did? I mean, people try to actually revise history when it comes to the Cosby Show in a different world and, and what, what happened and act like it's lightning in a bottle and it, and it and won't ever happen again. And that really upsets me. Well, um, well I, I add for that, it's an interesting thing about the impact of the Cosby mm -hmm. Show and the way we're talking about the revolution. We're talking about show business, not show friends, show business. Right. And I know we have some business school students here as well. The importance of the Cosby Show isn't just what it represented artistically. Keep in mind at the time, NBC was the fourth rated network and on the verge of bankruptcy. There had been three other networks that passed on the Cosby Show. <coughs> and when the Cosby Show hit the air, not only did it save the network, Half-hour sitcoms as a medium were almost off the air. It was almost all dramas. Mm -hmm. It saved the, the genre as well as revitalizing the William Morris agency and a boom for advertisers to billions of dollars. Mm -hmm. That was the business impact of the Cosby Show. It was the business that they had done. Mm -hmm. But when we talk about will the resolution be revitalized, content reflects leadership. Yeah. Content reflects leadership, and there are there is only one, if you want to argue, one African American owned network, and people will even argue the the substance of that, and that's TV One, not BET. BET is owned by Viacom. Right. So when you talk about right now, there's a, a group called Greenlighting, and they monitor media, and they they did the calculation that white males represent 34% of the population in America. They represent 85% of the images on television. You just have to let that kind of sink in yeah. for a minute. Yeah. But who owns and who, if you look at all the studio heads and all the heads of networks, they're white men. Content reflects leadership. Likewise, so you know, when I look at young students, and, and, and particularly as we sit here on the the revolution of technology, the explosion of YouTube, the explosion of internet distribution of video content. You know, there's, I, I can't remember the gentleman's name, but he, he's wrote a book that used to be us. His name is going to come to me in a minute, but he talks about, you know, like seven years ago, tweeters what birds did, um, uh, uh, Facebook, uh, I mean, Skype was a typo, you know, I mean, all, all these things are now dominating our universe. Well, now everyone, we are sitting on the cusp of what the next wave of media will look like. All of the major cable, television networks and, and the big three are running scared because they may become obsolete. Mm -hmm. And a level of control that the artist has never had before because for so own many work. years you had to get somebody else's okay to do anything, to step on any sort of stage or um, to get any sort of role or to write a script and Lord help us the difficulties of getting a script produced and in front of an audience and we're in a revolutionary time now where content can get delivered directly to an audience and there are fewer gatekeepers between the content provider and the consumer. And if there was ever a time when you can see something so revolutionary happen again, it's now. And so that's one of the things we would always encourage everyone to do is not to be discouraged and to seek out any other medium and, and, and every alternate way that you can to disseminate the art that you do. Because 
you know, we hear stories all the time, not necessarily our stories, but stories all the time of people who did a YouTube video and somebody saw them and now they've got a show and they, you know, this opportunity and that opportunity. You know, and as we can, we can acknowledge how difficult the road is for actors of color, you can, and, and we can gripe about it all day and night. At one point, you've got to do something about it. At one point, you've got to surrender. So this is what the situation is. How am I going to address it? And what am I going to do about it? Let me shift gears just a little bit here and focus in on the HBCU. Uh, for you, Mr. Bell, um, it was really, and for you as well, Vanessa, but I was uh, never so proud of <laughs> your work uh, on A Different World because what it did for me and for others, am I doing something wrong? <laughs> Vanessa. Vanessa. Maybe I'm nervous as well. <laughs> That's all right, Vanessa. Just Vanessa. Just Vanessa. Okay. At any rate, tell me about, tell me what you think A Different World did for the HBCU, the black college experience, because it's like nothing else. It, it is. It is. Between all of us who worked on A Different World, um, there is a Usually, now I won't say a day that goes by, but certainly not a week that won't go by, that someone will say, I went to college because I watched this work. <laughs> it's our greatest legacy. That when our show debuted, we doubled and tripled enrollment in HBCUs. Now, there's a great debate going on as to whether or not, I mean, people have said, you know, for a long time, I tried to apply to Hillman, I just couldn't find the college. I <laughs> looked for it, I couldn't find it. People argue with, Hillman, a representation of Hampton, or was it Spelman? Yeah, we, we got that debate all the time. And particularly Spelman, because it was used for some of the exterior shots, um, they always like to claim ownership of it. But it was supposed to be representative of all of that. Um, and for me, when I look at it, and as I was saying before, our show was criticized because we were supposed to be a half-hour sitcom. We attacked AIDS. We attacked apartheid. We attacked racism. We attacked homelessness. We talked about single parenting. We were issues oriented. Mm -hmm. We tried to reflect the fact, as I was saying in the interview I was doing with Jim and earlier, that in, in college is where young people develop a sense of self. It's where you, you define your political, political ideology and, and how you view the world, how you first come in contact with other people who would oppose that which you would advocate your entire life and how you deal with them. You know, when I was a, a freshman, I, I'm an alpha. And when I, when I got to school as a freshman, 